after the discussion of these directly acting drugs, catecholamines and non-catecholamines, now we can discuss one very very important phenomenon which is known as vasomotor reversal of Now before discussing about this topic, we must know, know about the effect of adrenaline on BP. As we have already discussed, adrenaline can act on all the receptors, alpha 1, alpha 2, beta 1, beta 2. And on the blood vessel, we have two receptors, alpha 1 and beta 2. We discuss A, B, C, D. Alpha 1 cause constriction, beta 2 cause dilation. Now, important point about adrenaline to remember is that alpha 1, alpha 2, beta 1, beta 2, four receptors, two present on the blood vessel. Now, alpha 1 receptors are the strong receptors, whereas beta 2 receptors are the sensitive receptors. Meaning of this term is, when they give even low dose of adrenaline, beta 2 can be stimulated because they are sensitive. Okay. So, even low dose can stimulate this and that low dose cannot stimulate alpha. But, when they give high dose, then all can be stimulated. And when both beta 2 and alpha 1 are stimulated, because these are strong receptors, so effect will be mainly due to alpha. So, at low dose only beta 2 is stimulated, at high dose both are stimulated, but the effect will be mainly due to alpha 1 receptors. If you want to discuss with example, suppose beta 2 can be stimulated with 50 molecules of adrenaline, those 50 cannot stimulate alpha 1. So, for stimulating alpha 1, we require 100. So, if we give adrenaline more than 100, then both will be stimulated, but the effect will be due to alpha 1 because they are strong, and we know alpha 1 cause vasoconstriction. So, more than 100 molecules of adrenaline will cause vasoconstriction, BP will increase. But if we give between 50 to 100, then only beta 2 can be stimulated, so that will cause vasodilation and that will decrease the blood pressure. Okay? So, if we discuss the effect of adrenaline on the blood pressure based on this hypothesis, suppose we have given 500 molecules of adrenaline. So, 500 will stimulate both alpha 1 and beta 2. This is the normal blood pressure. When 500 are given, alpha 1, beta 2 both are stimulated and the effect will be due to alpha 1. BP increases, so effect will be this. Okay. So, we have given 500 IQ. After some time, these 500 will start metabolizing. So, from 500 to 400, 300, 200, they will keep on decreasing. And as soon as they become less than 100, now alpha 1 cannot be stimulated. Now, only beta 2 can be stimulated. Because beta 2 is sensitive receptor. And when beta 2 stimulated, vasodilation occur. And when vasodilation occur, BP suddenly decreases. Not only to become normal, but even less than normal. Okay? So, if on the blood pressure, suppose it is 120, on 500 molecule it becomes 200 or 180, you can remember, this will become 60. Okay? So, this is the biphasic response of adrenaline. So, when these 100 start decreasing, 90, 80, 70, 60 effects start decreasing, and when it becomes less than 50, then there will be again normal. Okay? So, adrenaline produces biphasic response. First it increases, then it decreases. And this increase is mainly due to alpha 1 and this decrease is mainly due to beta 2. Okay? Because alpha 1 are strong, beta 2 are sensitive. Okay? Now suppose we give adrenaline and along with adrenaline we also give alpha block. So when we block alpha receptor, this will happen? No, this will not happen. It will be even more than this. Because now all 500 are acting on your beta 2. Remember, initially out of 500, they are acting on both alpha 1 and beta 2. And 500 beta 2 are opposing the action of alpha 1, but because alpha 1 is stronger, so this happens. But if we give adrenaline along with alpha blocker, all 500 can act only on beta 2, they cannot act on alpha 1. So instead of 60, the blood pressure can become 10 or 20. Okay. So we give adrenaline, it has caused decrease in BP rather than increase in BP. So this is the opposite to what we expected. So that is known as reverse. Vasomotor means effect on the blood vessel of the muscle is reversed. Normally we want, we think that they will cause vasoconstriction, but it has caused vasodilation, which is opposite. And it was first noted by scientist Henry Day, so it is known as vasomotor reversal of Day. Okay? So vasomotor reversal of Day is, if adrenaline is given with alpha blocker, then it will cause fall in BP rather than increase in BP. Okay? Now the important question is, why we want to know about this? What is so important in this that we want to know? So there must be some clinical importance. The importance of this finding is in patients with pure chromocytopenia.
you know few chromocytoma is tumor of adrenal medulla that will secrete adrenaline or noradrenaline but 80 percent or more of the few chromocytomas they mainly secrete noradrenaline so if noradrenaline is more blood pressure increases when blood pressure increases we give alpha blocker when we give alpha blocker blood pressure decreases but in case of noradrenaline we know not all so it simulates alpha 1 alpha 2 beta 1 it has no beta 2 activity so when we block alpha 1 there will be normal blood pressure blood pressure will not decrease so in case of noradrenaline secreting pheochromocytoma we have no problem they give alpha block but 20 percent of the pheochromocytomas they mainly secrete adrenaline so this person also has high bp person is at this stage 180 and in this person for reducing the bp if we give alpha blocker what will happen vasomotor reversal will happen and the person will suddenly go into hypotension that pressure will become 10 or 20 and the person will die due to hypotension so this is very important to remember that if a patient has pheochromocytoma do not directly give alpha blocker because alpha blocker if it is adrenaline that will result in vasomotor reversal and which will cause hypotension and person will die so first always we need to diagnose whether it is adrenaline or not if it is not adrenaline we can give alpha blocker no problem but if it is adrenaline do not give only alpha blocker so if it is adrenaline what should we do give alpha blocker plus beta blocker also so alpha plus beta blocker should be given to normalize the <coughs> and if it is not adrenaline then important point to remember is we can give alpha blocker but we can also give beta blocker remember beta receptor also will be stimulated when there is not adrenaline that will cause tachycardia but beta blocker should never be given before alpha blocker reason is if we give beta blocker first then they will act only on alpha 1 and that will increase the blood pressure further instead of 180 it will become 220 and at high blood pressure blood vessels in the brain will rupture and that can lead to cerebral damage so alpha blocker should be given before giving beta blocker or along with beta blockers beta blocker should